Society is starting to show signs of wanting to give musicians a pay raise. There's talk of subscription fees going up. Governments are trying to help. For example, in the UK, where they called the music industry into a parliamentary inquiry, they heard from labels and music services and musicians and unions, and they're doing a lot and putting a lot of pressure to get you a pay raise for your creations. If you're distributing your music onto the music services, then you really need to know how music rights and royalties work so that you can get in on this pay raise. And for you self-releasing musicians, you might uncover a pay raise immediately while watching this video. So many videos have tried and failed to explain music rights and how royalties should flow. Not this video. Once and for all, I'm going to break it down in infographic form. Hey, I'm Todd McCarty, and I dish out music marketing tips here on YouTube, and I run Band Builder Academy, which teaches artist development and fan building to artists, managers, and labels. I ran a large independent label, Fearless Records, for a decade, and I was a senior vice president of sales at Sony Music. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell, and I'll keep these videos coming. Before I break down the rights and royalties, check this out. Why you need to know this stuff. There's more money out there for you. You have more rights than you realize. Your distributor is not collecting all the money, and neither is your PRO. Do you want to make more money? Do you want to collect it quicker? Or maybe somebody else is watching after your business, and you're worried about them shortchanging you. Either way, I want you to be motivated by all the different ways of making money for musicians. You might lose your money forever. There's a lot of money that goes uncollected, and it ends up in somebody else's hands. Who gets it? What happens is uncollected royalties are held in suspense for usually about three years. If uncollected, it's past the statute of limitations, and the holding party usually has to pay it into a government-regulated fund, or it's divided up into the organization's members, usually the music industry. Knowing this prevents industry corruption, because it'll hold people accountable and prevent corruption and exploitation. Unfortunately, most people in the music industry just don't know this stuff, and you should never assume people do. It's not that the industry is outright hiding it from you, though there are some that clearly benefit from your ignorance. But actually, I've come across many people in this industry, even at the executive level, who didn't take the time to stop and fully understand music rights. So knowing this will prevent you from being taken advantage of. I didn't really feel confident talking about music rights until I came across this infographic that Royalty Exchange made. I owe a debt to them but I still had to take it a step further to fully understand it. I had to use specific examples, and that's what I'm going to do after I show you this infographic. So one of the most important things to look at in this infographic is the words here at the top. A song creates a copyright, which is granted certain rights that allow rights holders to collect royalties. Again, I'm going to read it again. A song creates a copyright, which is granted certain rights that allow rights holders to collect royalties. Semantics is the study of word meaning, and in this case, it's really important. For example, destination and last stop technically mean the same thing, but there are subtle shades of meaning in the different words. Some see the music royalty process as extremely complicated, and it is compared to the breakdown of concert revenue or selling a t-shirt. But if you memorize the 10 or 12 different terms and understand what they mean, it's not as complicated anymore. People use lots of terms that can have the same meaning, like song and composition, or song and master. So you have to pay close attention to the context. Another one is musician and performer. Aren't they the same? A performer can be a group name, whereas a musician is one individual. There's other nuances like this too. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the infographic. The example used was Knocking on Heaven's Door by Bob Dylan. So that's the song, and that creates a copyright. Now, there's two copyrights. There's the sound recording, and you want to read this really carefully, because it's important. The recording of a performance of the underlying composition. This is also called the master. Then there's the composition, the melodies, notes, and lyrics written down or recorded. So this is also called publishing. See how they have different words, sound recording and master, and then there's composition and publishing. Now, under the rights column, you have these six things, and actually, they're really similar. Like, synchronization is on both. That's at the top. And a lot of people think sync, they think, you know, publishing or one thing, but there's actually two payments for every sync. And then you've got reproduction rights, 
and mechanical rights. These actually are the same. They're just called something different. When you're talking about selling masters or sound recordings, that's like sold or streamed on Spotify, Apple, Amazon. And same with mechanical rights. These refer to when they're sold through those same platforms. So the third one down is performance rights. And again, there's one up here and then there's one down here. And this is when your music is played in public, like at bars and restaurants and stadiums. And th this is where other people get confused is there's performance rights on the sound recording side and those actually have another name called neighboring rights and they're collected by CMOs. And then the most popular one for performance is what your PRO collects, your performing rights organization. That's the most common one and it's paid out by your PRO on the composition. So most musicians, self-releasing musicians, are missing this top one called neighboring rights. Now, this is where you really got to look at these lines. For each one of these, they're paying out different parties. For master synchronization rights, they're paying out three different parties. Performers, record labels, and musicians and singers. Same with uh, reproduction rights, the, the, the masters. They're paying three different parties. And then same with the per performance rights, they're paying three different parties. So there's a lot of money changing hands here, there's lots of transactions. And then same down here, you can see all the different connections. On the rights holder side, you've got performers, which could be a band or whoever is in the recording contract that record, performed and recorded the master, and then record labels that own the masters, um, and then musicians and singers. And this is sort of like performers, but this could be like work for hire or union musicians as well. And then down here, you've got publishers and songwriters. And usually these are 50-50 splits, going 50% to the publisher, 50% to the songwriter is kind of typical. But um, you know, if you're a self-releasing artist and self-published artist, then 100% of it is going to you, except maybe if you have an administrator who's taking a collection fee. But I really wanted you to see this infographic. I thought this is really striking up here, and this is something you should always remember. And then just visualize all the different transactions and money changing hands between different parties. Um, but once you get comfortable with this, it's really not as difficult as everybody makes it seem. There are several income streams out there, other than what's coming through your distributor, that I can guarantee half of you watching haven't collected. And I'm not talking about the performance royalties that come through your PRO. A few of them can be really good money, like the Mechanical Rights Collective. This is a new one for 2021, and they just landed a $424 million settlement with Spotify, Apple, Amazon, and 15 other DSPs. This is your money. Here's a list that was published on the MLC's website. You can see a big chunk of it from Apple and Spotify here, and Google and Amazon as well. So now you know what's yours and what you need to register and what you need to collect. I'm going to continue this lesson for Academy members where I reveal some of the specific examples of how these royalties flow. And this is the spreadsheet I'll be teaching from. I teach royalty collection and registration in further detail with specific examples inside of Band Builder Academy. If you want access to this and everything inside the Academy, then please register at bandbuilderacademy.com. It's $29.99 a month. I do a one-time free coaching call, and I'll give you a 20% discount to Song Trust, which will help you set up your own publishing company and register all your music. I'm also going to leave a link below to download my free metadata template and spreadsheet. 